attempting to warn us with these films. The photos don't lie, everyone. There's many that will be attempted to debunk and criticize some of these photos. But when I'm taking these photos myself personally and looking at them close, it's real. I prayed I'd never have to see this thing up close myself, for real, through my own lens, but I have. Some were sent in to me from the California coast near Santa Rosa, and others that you'll see coming up in a second are ones I shot myself in Morganton, North Carolina. The hurricane season in 2017 was off the charts, record-breaking from Puerto Rico to Texas to Florida. It's just unprecedented, folks, what we're seeing happening. The volcanoes are erupting at record levels, triple the normal. Earthquake swarms across the globe have increased 6,000% over the last 25 years. Something's causing this. And the only thing that can cause this on a scale that we're seeing is a system like this, the Planet X system, Nemesis and its planets and moons coming into our system, creating havoc in our solar system. The poles are shifting, the Earth is, the crust is shifting, and the remaining effects are about to take place. Watch now Dave Dobbs. He's going to go through the timeline of all these flybys that line up with Nibiru and Nemesis coming through and what we're about to face in the coming months. Stay tuned. Hi ladies and gentlemen, Dave Dobbs here. It's the 5th of December, 2017. It's kind of two days after my big prediction period, isn't it? Where I said we'd go over um, Planet X on the what, 3rd, 3rd, 4th of December, 2017, which is this year. And have we seen any evidence of that? Have we seen seismic activity? Certainly not the scale that I was imagining, but that's, um, that's obviously a good thing, really. I mean, there's been enormous activity. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go through. We're just going to make have a little kind of look at some of the stuff that's happened since um, I... Remember, I, I went on Steve Olson's, uh, Steve Olson's show, the, uh, his show WSO, <coughs> Um, earlier in the week, um, I can't remember the exact date. I think it was about round about sort of like it was round about the end. It was the it was the end of November. And um, and he 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 was showing a uh, an incredible shot of um, of a massive orb next to the sun. And um, and obviously there's a lot of questions as if that is that even really our, our real sun. Certainly, Jeff Jeff Pease of a mind that that's a, a sun simulator, or at least much of the time it's a, it's a sun simulator. And that shot that Steve Olson brought it brought in, which was from the um, from and the Antarctica, um, where you see this massive orb next to the sun. What do you think? I mean, that's incredible. So there's there, there's the, you know since that since that shot, if we come to um, um, Alex uh, Lugin, um put a shot up on the 3rd of December, which is obviously the big date, um, the 3rd, 4th of December, um, which was the, the time that I was expecting the most activity. And you can see that, um, you can see the, 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 the red orb next to the sun. And, and I just want to say thanks uh, to Alex there for letting me use, um, post his, the, the footage that, he, that he's put up here. That red orb is exactly the same. Does that not look exactly the same as the orb that um, Earthly Patriot put up? Oh, I, about, I think it was on the 16th of October. I forget exactly, but I'm pretty much sure it was on the 16th of October. Just gone. Um, 2017, this year. And also Planet X Hunter, a new uh, Planet X, uh, also another quite new um, Planet X um, Nibiru video maker also put a very similar object up, a, a, a video or a shot of the same thing looking very similar. You know, and there you have it. And loads of people thought that was the sun when they saw that odd red orb. That wasn't the sun you were seeing, that was that. 
and the sun was being blocked out by whatever technology, in my opinion, and, and, and Planet, Planet X Hunter caught the actual the two images. So, um, so uh, and, uh, it's an amazing, it's, it's an amazing shot, as you can see, it's, it's a staggering shot, um, right where I'm expecting it to be. Um, it's, it's even closer to the sun than, uh, in many ways than I'm expecting it to be in some ways, but the, um, cause I'm expecting it to be actually further away from sun, even though there's an alignment. When I'm talking about an alignment, I'm talking about, well, it's difficult to say, but it, it's where, where I'm talking about alignment, I'm talking about where they, they, they reach a line, but, um, but, but, but planet X is actually below that line, even though there's a perfect alignment, it's like a tri it's more like a triangle sort of thing. And, and planet X f sits further in the Southern, much further in the Southern hemisphere. And so that's a little bit confusing that shot. And, and it's, 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 and, uh, it's also a, a shot that, you know, I, I don't know whether my model is correct or not. I really don't know whether my model is correct. And, you know, I was expecting much bigger earthquakes right now. I really was. I mean, let's have, we're going to get to the, the activity that we've actually had going on. Um, let's just come to um, this next shot. Um, this shot is um, uh, by Michael Miller. It's a drone shot. Um, it seems to be um, it, it, the date. The date stamp is, is the second of December two thousand and um, two thousand and seventeen. So it's just gone. What the heck is next to the sun? Now, what's interesting about this shot is um, yeah, we can look at the sun and we can look at the object that's about one o'clock to the sun. Um, <clears throat> Notice it's in a very similar position to um, Alex's shot. Not that that's really relative. Um, not that that's massively relative because it depends where you are on the earth. Um, that, that will change obviously and depends whether it's morning or evening. And um, I'm not too sure of the timestamp of this video. Um, but nonetheless, um, I'm, when, you move the, when you move the footage around, um, when you move the footage around, you can, um, you can see the two objects moving simultaneously, and that tells you very much it's not a lens flare. But there's another little object at seven o'clock to that. That you know, see, there's there, there's effectively three objects. One is very almost out of, sh out of sight and barely shows up. Um, but when you zoom into that shot, you see something which I think is very interesting, and that is. Where the where the where the bigger white one is, or in my opinion, is um, in my opinion that is very possibly the blue cochina, um, and the, one of the other objects that orbits the planet X system, which is closer, much closer to it than than Nibiru. But that other object you see at seven o'clock to the sun, that I'm of the mind is actually Nibiru itself. And you'll see it's got, it's like a ring. It's got the cloud round it and Nibiru is actually in the center and it's the cloud round it, which is catching the light. And that is now heading straight for us. That is, you know, we are, that is just gonna keep tracking directly towards us. We're gonna be moving around the sun. And as we move around the sun, that is gonna be constantly aiming towards us as it curves around on its orbital track around planet X. That is coming directly for us, folks. There's, there's, it's, and it's gonna, it's not gonna hit us. We're actually gonna go. We're gonna, we're gonna carry on going, and it's gonna, and and. But as it comes towards us, if this is the big flyby that I'm expecting, kind of towards the end of this year, um, and very, very, very early next year. You know, we just don't know because it's very difficult. Planet X is quite easy to predict where it is positioned because it's a big mass. We don't truly know where we're going to cross the path of Nibiru orbiting around planet X. But I'm estimating that it's going to be at the roundabout late December, early January, very early January. Very, very difficult to predict those, those exact times. But this, this, um, this, this year is going to be the, the end. This month is going to be a very exciting month, really. It's all, all, this, all the things that you're um, 
that you're kind of expecting to happen. And so um, my, Michael Miller has kind of asked, you know, what the heck is next to the sun? Please um, go onto his channel, subscribe. He's a new channel. No doubt he'll be he'll be now um, avidly kind of observing the skies with his drone. Um, it's great drone footage, really accurately. I won't play the whole footage. I just ask you to go in, subscribe to his channel, or at least go on, have a look at his channel, and comment on what you think it is. Um, let's open this up to debate because, like I say, I don't know. I haven't got the astronomical data to say whether I'm right, even with my timeline or anything. You know, I could be completely wrong um, about everything. So I'm opening up the debate here, but I certainly have, you know, in my correlations of from the 5th of August, where I show that, where, 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 the, where, where the first video capturing of, in my opinion, of Nibiru comes in on the 5th of, the 5th of August, 2011. And then we catch, we, we see this kind of 200 day anomalous occurrence, reoccurrence of this twin tail object, which I charted for some time before I started realizing that we need, I could start predicting this. It was so regular, I could start predicting it. And that's how my channel kind of grew from that point. And many of you, many of my subscribers know, have, have known me through that period. And there's always new subscribers coming to this and new people becoming aware of this and wondering what the hell this is, get what, what the hell the Planet X system is. Uh, and many of you have seen all, my, all the flybys that I've, I've shown over since I've had a YouTube channel, you know, showing this odd occurrence of this 200 day cycle that comes, well, you know, that, that what NASA tells us is, is all these different things and yet all these different objects seem to have this odd 200 day kind of um, interval. And NASA tells, that tells us they're all different things and, and we're kind of supposed to believe that. And then we start seeing, you know, six or seven of them um, in a row, 200 days apart. And then I start predicting them and, and I've done what, five, six flybys and you know, around about the, um, and I keep repeating this information, obviously, because there's always new subscribers that come to this. And it's so important to understand that there are correlations in all of this information. Now, that doesn't mean that my timeline is correct. And certainly, you know, I was expecting some pretty big seismic activity as of, as of, as of late. And um, have we had it? We certainly haven't had tsunamis and we certainly haven't had anything sort of like above a seven. We've had a few 6.2s and the likes, and we've had, We've certainly had some massive swarms of um, earthquakes um, all, all, all around us, all around the globe. Massive swarms of earthquakes all around the globe. Severe flooding all around the globe. And all the major volcanoes have been going off. All the magma chambers have been filling on all the major volcanoes. Um, so there's been, no, there's been no lack of kind of, it's not been quiet in any way, shape or form. It hasn't quite been the effect that I was expecting. But then we haven't really had the solar flare that I was expecting either. I was, ex I was expecting a massive CME and without a massive CME, we don't get a massive kind of like massive jolt in energy. And that's quite, that's quite interesting because I was expecting a massive CME from this. Um, quite why that didn't happen, I do not know. Maybe, well, there's just, just a million different maybes. You know, we just, I just do not know. You know, the best thing I can do is just charter this pattern and that's what I've done. So let's keep going with some of the other things that we've seen. Um, I, you know, I, whilst I'm saying that, I've just been showing you the, um, the flyby so far um, that, that we've had. And, um, and you know, and it's, it's so important to just to sit, just to keep an eye on those. Because like I say, though it's, though it's repeating it for all my, all my subscribers that have seen it for so many times, because that's really a big focal point of all my videos is trying to keep these corroborations together and keep this story together because many of you have no doubt have gone out and bought food because I've been saying you know hungry man is an angry man and we are going to be led into a place where we could be desperate now you have to understand that much of the earth is flooding at the moment much especially in the southern hemisphere of this planet and all my viewers are in, in, like the ones in Australia and New Zealand and and the ones who sort of like uh well, the ones in the southern aspects of of, of our glo of our of our of our globe are going to be much more kind of like um, um, are going to have much more of an affinity with those words than than people in the northern hemisphere. But you know, don't count your chickens just yet because this is the beginning. This is literally the beginning of this process. 
and we have to let's just take a look at this shot as well this is um this is um this is a shot that came in um on the 3rd of december as well it's a shot blake cousins put up on third phase of the moon um great channel um great coverage um this is you know he 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 he's he, he's got constant fresh data coming in and this is another another one of his um his um, I suppose subscribers who's um, who's gotten to him and, and had this amazing thing come in from um, from Sweden. Now this is, this is what Jeff P would call the kind of the the, the 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 lens array, this kind of shield thing that looks like a sun dog, except that we see it from outer space. We've seen the same image from the ISS satellite, the International Space Station satellite. Um, you know, so we know it's actually not as you know we you can. We just don't understand truly really what it is. By by logic, it should be ice crystals, and very potentially it is. But something seems to happen to the sun at specific points when, when a part of the planet X or the Nibiru system or the dark star, whatever you want to call it, when part of the the dwarf the dwarf the, this dwarf planet this with this whole system, the Nibiru system, when it when any part of that. Um, goes in front of the sun, something seems to fire up. This unusual light source seems to fire up and it's not a direct light source. It's a very unusual kind of, and it seems to refract into clouds. It seems to have a kind of like a plasmoid effect in the, in the skies. It does, it, we, we just, it's, there's so much stuff we don't, we don't understand. Is it man-made? Is it being done by something much higher to stop us going in, into panic during, during us going through this process? No one really understands or knows why it does what it does, but there it is. And we've we've had this we've had this this system quite a few times. So this showed itself ironically on the third of third of December two thousand and seventeen. And this is this is to me this is our, our big alignment point uh, uh, with, with with the kind of like with the planet X system. So we're expecting to see some pretty anomalous things on this day, and sure enough, we really have. So. Um, Volcanoes, you know, we've had Mount Agung um, um, or Ajung, if it's correct. I'm never, never, never really too sure how to pronounce the the the, the name of the Bali um, Balinese volcano that's been erupting. And in my opinion, that's going to calm down now. To me, in my opinion, that's kind of done it the biggest part of its eruption now, and it should start calming down now. I had a friend going out, going out there, and I said to her, "You know, you have to understand if you're flying out to Bali around about that time, it's quite likely your flight's going to be cancelled because all the all all the volcanoes are going to be going off um, um, around that area, all of them." And um, and we have to kind of, we just have to kind of accept that it, it's it's this this is a massive gravitational body that's in quite quite close proximity to our sun um, and to our Earth and. And maybe that's what maybe that that could be a re real distinct reason why it hasn't actually. Um, I mean, this could be a reason why it hasn't massively affected our Earth because it's moving further away from the sun now. So we just we just don't know why we haven't had the big eruption, but we've certainly had all the epic sightings of it. We don't know really how it's going to affect us, but we can see that all of the all the volcanoes are going off. Ajung's going off. Um, the closest volcano to uh, Mexico City, Popocatapetl, that's also gone off. And, you know, that's obviously, um, that's another big volcano. It's, um, the, you know, the whole thing is pretty, you know, all the, all, all the volcanoes around the, Pacific ba um, around the Pacific Basin, what they, what they now refer to as the Ring of Fire, are all going off. We understand that many of the, many of the, of the volcanoes um, that link the arm that comes down from Russia, the Kamchatka Peninsula, um, the the under, it's it's like a it's, they call it the Emperor Hawaiian Seamount Chain, and they're under underwater um, volcanoes that link from Kamchatka Peninsula right down to Hawaii. Many of those are very active, and of course this is boiling the oceans. It's literally putting so much heat into the ocean. So we get to this point now, and it's like putting a pot on 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 the fire. Obviously. Tremendous heat goes into the water, which means that enormous vapor is now going to go into the into the into into the air, into the atmosphere, and so that process is really just beginning now. So 
countries in the southern aspect of the globe are now going to be are going to be getting enormous storms, and they're really going to start from around about now. They're just well, they've been already obviously been starting. We had enormous flooding, but that can only get far worse right now. So we've got extreme flooding, and so for all of those, if all, all those people right now in the southern in the southern aspects of the globe that have gathered food and that sort of stuff, that's going to be really essential because people are going to be really struggling, and your food, the food that you've stored, is going to be. Um, it's it's going to be it's it's going to be um, it could be really helpful, but for those of you that have now got, especially those in America, you know, most of my subscribers are in America, and most of you are um, so far have not been affected by this. We had at the very beginning of or the very end of November, the beginning of of December, thirtieth of um, November, we had a massive six point seven earthquake. Um, on the on the mid mid Atlantic Ridge, and that 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 was very very big. Um, that's very unusual. It's a very unusual lo location for you know it's it's um, it, it, it shows of something you know anomalous. So you know there there has been sign of of solar activity. Um, um, certainly, um, Dutch Sins has been talking about um, some some signs of of, um, of of solar activity, although that's not his speciality, but. He mentioned in one of his his videos that that was that was a sign, and that's what really, that's the key. Like I say, you know, solar activity coming into the planet, you know, triggers many of these big things, and we just haven't had that with this alignment of Planet X. We've certainly had the sightings of it. We've certainly had the volcanoes. We've had, certainly had swarms and swarms and swarms of 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 little earthquakes everywhere, all around the globe, masses and masses of them, but nothing specifically really big. Um, we had a uh, we had um on the first of december we had a uh, i think it was something like a what was it listed down here a um um a 6.3 in iran another 6.3 in iran um what else have we had we had a 6.2 in um on sunday uh third which was um in ecuador 6.2 so we've had we have had um we have definitely had activity um what else have we had we've had we've had quite a few swarms in um we've had quite a quite quite a lot of quite a few you know lots of tremors in right around or you know in america um some of you are sort of like we had one in delaware we've had i mean you've just had you know, I don't know, you know, you don't normally get so many earthquakes on the East Coast and you've had a few tremors on the East Coast. You've certainly had lots of lots of swarms again. I use the word swarms. It's one of the terms that Dutch since uh, seems to use all the time. And um, and I love his correspondence because, you know, his last few videos have been absolutely fascinating because he's literally been talking about volcanoes occur, uh, earthquakes occurring. And then they get literally get um, deleted as he's talking about them. So someone's really controlling the information about earthquakes, really don't want us to see how big they are and how frequent they are and the size of some of these earthquakes. And some of them are completely deleted, many of them, and he's he's there corresponding on, on earthquakes as they come in and they literally get deleted as he's talking talk, as 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 he's making his his um his his live show. So that's that's very interesting. So then we come to this big well it wasn't that big, but there was an earthquake at the, at the in the region that, that North Korea is is um, so apparently it's conducted a nuclear test or several nuclear tests. Now that's very timely, isn't it? Because it was on the second uh, of December, and I find that quite timely because I of I'm of a mind he he's not developing nuclear nuclear technology. It, it cannot serve him to develop nuclear technology there's no you know just because the, our governments think in 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 the lines of nuclear technology that doesn't mean that everyone's or, or, or in, in thinking in that in that way so your next door neighbor is developing a nuclear bomb would you develop a nuclear bomb to blow your next door neighbor up to solve the problem that just doesn't make sense does it only the most stupid mentality goes down this corridor i'm afraid and our governments, whatever's ruling them, this NATO, this, this NATO alignment of this is all out war is of this mindset or is of this fission based nuclear mindset. And so I don't I, I don't think that everyone intelligent would be of that same mindset because it just doesn't make any sense. It's not a winning objective to blow your neighbor up 
and take yourself with to take take yourself with the explosion before they can blow you up. It just seems that oh, can you understand that there's a, not a complete state of logic involved in that equation? And so to, to, for us to assume that he would have done this and that we've got a bombing because he's destabilized it and he's causing earthquakes. What he's done is he's drawing fire away from Iran because once Iran goes, um, the source of oil which was going to come in, which was going to make the whole BRICS network run, which was effectively going to, which, which, which was the whole system for challenging the US dollar and to try and bring the world out of this wage slavery, this world that's, that's kind of held in prison by this fiat based currency that doesn't actually have its own value that derives its value by the movement of everyone else's wealth and as long as everyone keeps buying into it it perpetuates it it's not based on the on gold anymore it's just based on the it's based on the petrodollar movement it's 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 not backed by any any intrinsic wealth wealth within itself it's just riding off the back of the world's wealth and just running the world into the ground it's it's it, it's it's slavery it's wage slavery wrapped up in a currency it's a most advanced form of slavery and, and the world is trying to break free from that for, from that and bringing us into a basket of currency and trying to jump us up a level in terms of this evolution and really all we're seeing here is not really the end of the world but just seeing the end of fit based currencies the end of this kind of wage slavery which is dominating this world so we don't really know if north korea has dead test fired nuclear bombs because this this um, exp this this earthquake kind of demonstrates right in the region where he does these these nuclear tests demonstrates that quite likely what he's been claiming is claiming is a nuclear bomb is actually just um, earthquakes that are naturally occurring as a result of tectonic plate movements in this area and because of the movement of Nibiru and where the West is Western governments are denying it there he is openly showing and demonstrating that. Um, I mean, clearly something else has occurred that or he's detonated another nuclear bomb. But I don't really think that's that's, you know, if I if I jump forward to this, this image, I run a click. This is an image that Dutch, um, the Dutch since put up on the um, on the 3rd of December 2017. And he brought it into one of his talks about sort of like about all the different things that could be causing many of these earthquakes. And he's of a mind it's it's fracking, um, it's fracking and um and you know oil wells and that sort of stuff and i was of that same mind before i before i discovered planet x i was of that same mind and i would have got quite irate if someone had someone had said said counter to that and so i do totally understand anyone who thinks that planet x is not real and 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 you're and you're concerned that it threatens the entire kind of you know the the, the, the kind of climate change global warming global calling whatever you want to call it this kind of like this understanding that the that, that our our environment is being affected by our use of fossil fuels and the way in which we're running our world and running our economies and everything else of that and I, I i've very much been on the same same camp most of my life you know and still am today largely but but I've just discovered Planet X. I've just discovered it's a very real thing, and it was a very painful thing to discover, especially being, you know, a, a climate change activist for much of my life as well. And to see this, and it doesn't mean that I've stopped in my in my in my want for sort of like our, our world to be, but to come into an environmental kind of like mentality where we're looking after this planet and we're coming into a sustainable mindset. But um, but nonetheless, this image here just shows all the nuclear test sites in just a very very small area. You know, it's it, that's a tiny area, and you can see just on that tiny area in America. I'm not too sure the exact location there where he zoomed into, but you can see there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of um, nuclear craters created by a test 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 fire and nuclear bombs, and we are trying to take the world into war because. North Korea has test fired two nuclear weapons and we're saying that they would be irresponsible with nuclear weapons. This is after we invaded Iraq illegally, dumped probably 30 to 40,000 times more radioactive waste that was generated by the Hiroshima bomb and dumped it in the form of depleted uranium bombshells on Iraq. For in the name of a crime we know they really didn't commit and then we have that then we then then we then we get angry at the refugees fly, fleeing this area because of all of this all this 
evil, horrible crime that we've that the that, that our Western governments have uh, have committed, and then we point the finger that they would be irresponsible with nuclear weapons, and that we need to have all our nuclear heck to solve the problem. We have a little bit of a problem here. We've got a massive problem. Can you see why I came to Europe? When I came to France, rather, you know, when, 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 you know, the whole Brexit thing started, you know, we have this massive thing where it's all going wrong. And then suddenly all the free men on the landers start shouting out, Europe done it. And it's just like, guys, I don't think Europe done it. You know, France wouldn't even join us in the Iraq war. They literally wouldn't join us in the dumping of the depleted uranium. They would not join. Can you imagine Joe, Jose Bove, who drove a bulldozer? He's French. He drove a bulldozer through McDonald's saying because because and, and, and you remember France, you know, they they, they wouldn't they wouldn't join the bombing campaign. Um, what happened then? McDonald's said that they were going to take the name French out of their product name, their French fries and call them freedom fries. If if Iraq didn't join the um, if jo didn't join the bombing campaign. And so France didn't join, and so freedom fri uh, French fries became a freedom fries in McDonald's. You know, and that was around about the time Jose Bove drove a bulldozer through McDonald's. And uh, this is the French view. This is French activism. And I'm not trying to say there's no activism in my, in my country. It's just that so many people in my country just suddenly jumped onto the bandwagon. That Europe done it. And it was just like, no, 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 guys. Stop it. You're just being used as pawns to take this whole kind of free man on the land, this whole kind of notion of sovereignty and that sort of stuff and drive it all against Europe. You're being used by someone else's agenda, the agenda that's driving Trump and everything else like that, that's driving this whole war, this whole hate. And of course now what do we have? We have... Um, so we've just got the, you know, we've just got this Trump's one in his... Um, in um, you know, in the in the Supreme Court, he's um, he's he's managed to enforce a uh, a travel ban, and um, and that's going to go out to um, to Chad, Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria, um, Yemen, and obviously North Korea. You know, so um, Venezuela. You know, have they really done it? Um, just, Libya. You know, you can see they're next on the sort of like on the bombing list, aren't they? You can see where this is all going. Just you, you know, where isn't the NATO at war? You know, this is a NATO-led war that's going to try and take you into into war. And so, where do we come to next? And this is really what the food is all about: getting this food in advance. Is because Donald Trump's armada now heading for North North Korea. Now, this was um, this was this was um, this was this was back in April. Remember when he said when he when he said in a speech? I'll play you the, a, 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 fr a fraction of the footage. We redirected navy ships to go toward the Korean Peninsula. What are we doing right now in terms of North Korea? You never know, do you? You never know. That's all you're going to. You know, say. I don't talk about the military. Yeah. I'm not like Obama, where they talk about in four months we're raiding, we're going to hit Mosul, and in the meantime they get ready and like you never so look. They're still fighting. Mosul was supposed to last for a week and now they've been fighting it for many months and so many more people died. I don't want to talk about it. We are sending an armada, very powerful. We have submarines, very powerful, far more powerful than the aircraft carrier, that I can tell you. And we have the best military people on earth. And I will say this, he is doing the wrong thing. Do you think he's mentally fit? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know him, uh, but he's doing the wrong thing. Um, you remember this was back in North Korea. Um, uh, this was back in, you remember this was back in April. And he'd, um, and he said he was sending an armada. Now you remember what I told you that when Nabooru last came in, the Spanish, yeah, they, they planned this for a long time. They chopped down every tree in Spain and most of the trees in France and gathered all the timber all around. They destroyed all their forest to build the biggest, biggest armada to ever set sail to invade Britain. And of course, what I wrote about in Laughing Gas was, you know, the message I was given was you approach a wall and nothing gets past this wall that is of war. That was actually the message I was given. That's what inspired me to write Laughing Gas. That is what we approach right now. And that's what you come to right now. That's what is literally approaching. 
right now. And so Donald Trump's sending in the, 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 the Armada. You saw it with Afghanistan. You saw it with um, Iraq. You saw it with um, um, you saw it with Libya. You've seen it. I mean, you've seen it with you. You, you know, you, it, it's this kind of like a, it, it. It just doesn't end, does it? It's just this ongoing. We're seeing it with Syria. We're seeing it with everywhere. You know, it's just ongoing bombing, 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 bombing. Always at war. Always on the aggressive. aggressive. And the reason is because the higher gods will not get involved in the earth plane if humanity is of war. Except, is humanity of war? And as I understand it, humanity is not of war. Humanity is being subverted with war. This was the message I'm getting. This is how, this is why we are going to be massively helped through this process. But it's going to come at a price. And the price is, you know, and, and the price is what I try to describe in Laughing Gas is, is, you know, we, you, you can understand that, you know, the Russians are now, are now massing on, on the North Korean border as well, as well as the Chinese. No one knows how many Chinese are massing on the Chinese border. Now, where you're going to be fed stories that this is all going to be a land grab, that the Chinese are going to try and go for the, go for the land. And the, sort of like, uh, and the Russians are all going to go for a land and, and it's going to be a massive great land grab. No, nah, it's not. Uh, this is not, you know, North Korea wouldn't go this on, 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 it wouldn't do this out on its own. The North Korea is being, you know, you're making a lot of assumptions. If you think this is just a massive great land grab, you know, this the whole Iran kind of BRICS network, BRICS, BRICS as in Brazil, Russia, India, um, China, and South Africa, they're all joining this network to become part of this new kind of, it's like an oil bourse. You know, if you could call OPEC an oil bourse that funnels oil, and we know that right now, not that the Saudi Arabia that effectively runs OPEC, um, the oil producing economic um, countries, um, we know that that's massively, you know, they've been driving the price of oil so low to try and break all the competition to try and break Syria to you know to try and break any competition to this and there it's they haven't done it you know they haven't broken Syria they haven't broken Lebanon they haven't broken sort of like uh, China they haven't broken Iran um yes Venezuela on is, is on its knees but now Venezuela is looking Venezuela is is going to be massively helped and it's looking to set up its own cryptocurrency right now things could unfold for Venezuela you know but they've just got to ride this out right to the end and when I say the end right until Nibiru passes anyone who goes on the aggressive on the aggressive just like the Spanish did and remember in the days of the Spanish Armada the Spanish were becoming more powerful than the Vatican itself. Isn't that interesting? And so they were encouraged to invade Britain and became the weakest force instead of the strongest force. Isn't that interesting? That um, that they were they were they were led into a, into attacking Britain at the worst time they could they, they could do an invasion. And that's exactly what's happening with the Americans right now. Americans with NATO, NATO effectively, NATO is dragging, um, is trying to drive the NATO countries into invading a sovereign country at the worst possible time, at the worst possible time to make exactly the same mistake and ironically they're calling it the Armada. It's hilarious really, if we cannot see what's happening. You know, the, you won't get, a, you know, uh, admittedly, I kind of wanted more kind of seismic activity to give you, to give us all the warning. But at the same time, you remember when Fukushima occurred and then a week later, um, the NATO countries, you know, Britain, and America started bombing um, Libya. And I can imagine that um, NATO was imagining that we would get a much more, much, much greater seismic activity and that they could... They could use that as a kind of as a as a bit of a as a bit of a smokescreen to um, to go into North Korea and um, and they're not going to get that, which means that it's going to be what William Burroughs would call a naked lunch. If they invade, you're going to see really what's right on the end of the fork. 
you know, okay, you've got you've got this, you've got Donald Trump enforcing a travel ban on all Muslims, you know, and all these countries that won't be able to like come to America, which means that that's going to create a lot of anger. You're going to create a lot of anger. Um, you know, that's going to that's going to come back on America. That's going to come back on on America massively. That's going to cause problems, big problems. But um, you can see that big cogs are moving. So. You know, there's going to be every attempt to try and find other things to sort of divert the attention whilst this armada goes in. And, and, and after more than two decades of waivers, we are no closer to a lasting peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinians. It would be folly to assume that repeating the exact same formula would now produce a different or better result. Therefore, I have determined that it is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. You know, I, I just I just don't think the aggressive stance right now, I think we should all just back down, walk away from the guns and realize we're all being played by NATO. And NATO is not a landmass, it's an oceanic place. NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This is an oceanic order driving a landmass into war. Yeah united in our recognition of NATO as the bulwark of our collective defence. And today, we've reaffirmed our unshakable commitment to this alliance. Mr President, I think you said you confirmed that you're 100% behind NATO. This is, in my opinion, this is more like the, you know, reptilian or something like that. If there is ever reptiles or anything else of that, yeah, we, we, you know, we just see it as kind of alien technology coming in and we, we assume it's come from crashed UFOs and, and, what, 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 and these, sorts of, these sort of things and it's been back engineered and that sort of stuff. But supposing we've just been buying it from more advanced, supposing we've just been buying it from or exchanging it for gold and for, 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 for we, things we just don't really understand. But we've been buying it, we're exchanging it um, with intelligence that lives within our, within our oceans. You know, the greater proportion of this earth is oceanic. We understand we have a moon and the moon moves the oceans and it creates the waves and enables the oceans to breathe, which means that the moon is part, as part and parcel of an oceanic world. If we lost the moon, it wouldn't be the... The, 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 the world above the, above the water line that, that, that suffers most, it would be the oceans. And so whatever lives in the oceans, um, whatever intelligence lives in the oceans, um, it requires the moon. Take the moon away, the oceans would die. Um, it's part of that, it's part, it's much, the moon is much part, much more part of that system than it is of the system that, that we need. If you took the, the oceans, if you took the moon away, we would, we would, we would, we could survive. That which lives in the oceans would die. Um, you know, and so NATO, it's NATO that's driving this. And, you know, with this massive build up on the, you know, we've got literally Israel bombing Syria right now, Damascus, trying to start World War Three, trying to engage, um, desperately trying to engage Iran, desperately trying to engage um, Lebanon into war. Everything they can do to try and start World War Three, everything they can say that, to try and engage the Iranians and the Iranians know what's coming on. This is where they are the original this is where the story of the Bible came, came from. This is, this is where um, Zakar Sitchin, who, who, who wrote The Twelfth Planet, which was all about Nibiru originally, the first real writer about it, um, before Carlos Ferrada really talked about it, before any of we really started understanding any of this ancient text or tablets that was bought by, bought, you know, the Sumerians had um, or left us. You know, this... It... it this is, you know, Sumeria is where, where, the, where, where the stories of, of, you know, outside of the Hopi text and, and what have you and, and the Mayan text, you know, the, our, our biblical text is, is Sumerian text. It, it's, it's Mesopotamian. It's, 
It's from Syria. It's from Iran. It's from the very people that we're that this is where our Bible originates from. These are the people that we're being that, that is a that, we, that that is what is being attempted to make us do. It's a it's it's, it's, it's forcing us to try and bomb the the place where our Bible originated from to attack the very bloodline that we say that we are praying to. Jesus is from Syria. His parents came from Damascus. You know, they were paying their taxes to Caesar. Can, can you understand that this whole drive for war right now is going against everything that the Bible is about? It's, you are you're going in the wrong direction. You know, Trump is being duped into, into releasing an armada. Or, or, you know, or, 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 you know, you've got to try and see through this and realise that this is a trap. And if you go into this, um, and this is really why I was talking about buying the food more than anything else, is because whenever Naburi has come, whenever it's come by, it's always come with massive geopolitical front to it. And this is the big geopolitical front. Um, this is going to be Donald Trump's great armada, you know, and it's going to be sent ironically from, you know, it's, it, it, it's the, ironically, it's the Senate that's, that's effectively sending this, this great armada that is mostly funded through Israel. It's the Senate and ironically, it was the same in the days of Rome. It was the same with the Spanish Armada, which really was a continuation of the days of Rome. It hasn't changed. The same. It's the same power base. It's the same thing going on. It's the same game. Yeah, you've got a bit more advanced technology, but it's the same game. It's the same thing unfolding. And if you go to war, you're going to make the same mistake. You have to listen to this and wage peace. This is why you're going to need food because you, you cannot, you will not achieve your objectives if you go by war. If that is your gate, all, all of this hate of Muslims, you see all this hate of, of, of Angela Merkel now because she's been very lenient with, with letting Muslims come in and people are saying, oh, there's just too many and they can't handle it. Well, you know, the real logic would be to stop bombing Syria, to stop funding or the killing, to stop sending weapons to the area, to, to, to back off from, from the whole weapons things. But, you know, we, we too, like, like the Iranians, like the Syrians, like the North Koreans, like all of those are, are seeing what the, what the West is desperately doing in this, in, this, in, this, in this mad drive to make this war, that makes World War Three happen. And they're just desperately trying to hold it off. They're desperately trying to hold it off until after the passage of Nibiru. And, um, and we just don't know how this is going to go. But once, this, once Nibiru is passed, I mean, the world is going to be a very different place. And many of you are going to be brought into a state where you're also going to be thinking you want to defend yourself. And self-defense is going to be everything. And all I can tell you is, If you're going to think about self-defense, take it one, one step further and think which self do you want to defend? Because that's what this is really all about. Because Earth is going into a singularity. All that is interference is going to be removed from humanity. But the final choice of which soul resides which soul you truly, each individual human tallies with, with, lies with the individual human. And so this is really just a massive marketing campaign to try and draw you to one soul or another to go with your ego-based state or go with your higher-based state. Neither is wrong, but you will have a choice and that's what you're coming into now. And some of you are going to be drawn into war and hate and some of you are going to be drawn into love, community and peace right now and union and trying to facilitate as much help and as uh, as much as uh, assistance as as you can right now and that's what this is all about so 
that's really where this is all going. Stay in peace, stay in love, do the very best you can. It's the same message, my, my message all pretty much all come into the same sort of na same nar narrative. You know, I asked, um, I asked when I went into my state of prayer and I had my big answer, I said, when do you step in? And the answer I got was, at the moment I had both feet, feet in. But if you don't want me, I will take both feet out. And if you go into a state of war, I can promise you that Godhead state of you which steps in will step out. It will not be part of you if you are of war. It will step away. Because it's not here to engage in that. It's not allowed to engage in that in this time. It will pull out. And that means that when the Buru goes by, it has such an ungrounding effect on the psychic links, the psychic fourth and fifth dimension dimensional links from the human state on the third dimensional being on this planet on this earth plane to a higher level and when that's broken we can lose our connection with our divine souls so ladies and gentlemen sorry again for another long video if you if you haven't already make sure you've got lots of food in stock because you're heading into now the very very difficult period now we're in it a very exciting time Good luck through this transit. You know, Nibiru, the big passage comes. You see it coming in. You see a first shot of it. I'm, I'm of a mind. You know, Michael Miller um, caught it. That's it coming in. I'm, I'm of a mind. And it's going to get closer and closer and closer to us. And it's going to pass by at the end of this month. Um, and it could very likely cause um, a blocking out of the sun. So it's going to be a big, we've got a big month. An exciting month. Community. Food. And important things. And, and lots of love. Lots of caring. Lots of helping, lots of assisting, lots of sharing, lots of um, lots of honey in the heart, big love, big you know, power to you. Thank you. Bye bye.